longtime naval man. But now he hates belly buttons. Ray Charles. When television was invented, people were worried that it ended up providing nothing more than pure aisle entertainment. Whoops. 75 years on, and the best thing on the box is Robot Wars. Okay, so it's hardly sophisticated or educational. But when does anybody get mashed up with a chainsaw on question time? Exactly. What we all want to watch is wanton destruction. Grown men and women using remote control fighting machines to bash it out for a place in our series semi-finals. John Logie Baird may be turning in his grave, but at least he won't be turning over the channel. Let's find out who's getting pure aisle this week. Craig, Mr. Baird, would be scared of our seated machine. Cerberus number 18 against Onslaught back from the last series of newcomers. Terrible. And remember, Hypnodisc, our second seed's frightening for the Predator and the Razorblade. They're in the pits right now. There is a key robot in this melee, and I certainly wouldn't want to be a Razorblade. Hello, team. Hello. What are you powered by? The lift is powered by a ABS pump from a Ford Granada, and the uh, motors are powered by 24 volt. Say a couple of prayers. I wouldn't want to be them. I also wouldn't want to be Predator. The uncle and nephew team from Manchester. This is a great looking robot. Well done on the design. Very interesting. Check this out. Knitting needle teeth. I think they'll need more than knitting needles when they're up against the robot, which is the number two seed. Everybody involved in Robot Wars wants to know what's going to happen this wars with Hypnodisc. The Rose family are back again. And they've righted a few wrongs from the last wars. Number one, everyone wanted to know if they would come back with a self-writing mechanism, and voila, chaos to watch out. Talk me through the changes you made to the disc. Uh, we've added a much more powerful motor, so it can accelerate the, uh, the disc up to about 750 RPM in about three and a half seconds. So it's, it, you get there twice as fast, twice as, fast. as you did last year, yeah, and, and you've got 50% extra yep. speed in the disc. So these are going to hit you at about 70 miles an hour. 70 miles an hour the tip, yep. In my opinion, this is the robot to keep your eye on. Now, I'm not one to start a fight, but let the wars begin! <laughs> From Cambridge, Razorblade. Updated after a close shave in the last series, aluminium and steel, a hydraulic lift and spike, the hydraulics from a saloon car braking system. Will this razor blade be all over its opponents like a rash? Hello, we're the razor blade team. I'm Paul, this is Steve, this is Howard. This is our robot. It's fitted with a hydraulically powered flipper, which uh, runs at 2,400 pounds per square inch. It's driven by two 24 volt electric motors and uh, we've replaced the chainsaw that we had on the back last year with a spike weapon to give us a bit more manoeuvrability and a bit more weight to play with. We're hoping to do well. If we get mullered by the house robots, we're happy with that as well. Rob Bambury at seated number two, Hypno Kick. Very quick at up to 20 miles an hour, powered by those three motors and hugely destructive with a 750 RPM spinning disc. The shell is aluminium and mild steel to engineer precision. In the last series, very little could live with Hypnodisc. The singular most destructive robot we've ever seen. Crash and bash and smash. Little left of anything else. It ripped and tore its way through the early battles. But ultimately, the Rose family was bettered by Chaos 2. The machine that went on to win the last series. They got in with a wedge attack and stop that spinning disc. Then flipping hypno disc, they realized there was no streaming. The disc comes back with one this time. Will that be the difference? Hi, I'm Dave, the team captain. This is Derek and our father Ken. This is our robot, Hypno Disc, based on the same design as last wars. A number of improvements we made on the self-writing arm to get us back on our wheels. Uh, the much stronger teeth and far more powerful disc. From Manchester, Redditor. Pneumatically powered weaponry here, a lifting fork at the front, a spiked pickaxe at the rear, the head comes from a wok, the dreadlocks from a beaded curtain, the chassis from the armor plating of a police van. Hi, my name's Barry, this is Stephen, behind me is Christopher, we are Team Predator, this is our robot, the Predator. This is a fun lifting ramp powered by CO2, and it's very speedy and very deadly. 
Ahead we have got movable jaws, we've got flashing lights, we've got strobe lights, we have got dreadlocks. And so I the tail of this powered ice cream. Stand by. Razor blade, captain by Paul Hart, the driver, Steve Scotch, the tactical expert, Howard Andrews with a beard. His job is uh, panicking, he says. There's Hypnodisc, the all-powerful Dave, Derek and Ken Rose, Ken in the middle. And finally, we've got the Predator. Barry Willits, the man there at the controls. Three, two, one. Razor blade immediately bisecting the two opponents, but it's all about hypno disc and the damage it can do immediately slanting off the body there as a predator. And again, hypno disc immediately on the attack. That weapon will hit you at 75 miles an hour. Backs away to come on the drive again. All eyes on the number two seeds. Deflected there though off the razor blade and not causing as much damage as we thought it might early on here. Bit of a surprise. The Rose family have put together a wonderful machine and that's the first damage significantly we've seen and the Predator's front is buckled, look at that! Almost ripped off there, the aluminium covered Teflon shield of the Predator in the middle of the arena and just trying to stay away from trouble little nudge from Razor Blade bravely on the no disc up on its side, bouncing down the blade, the disc still turns and again on the attack on Razor Blade, and Razor Blade just sitting there. I wonder if it's been immobilized in the arena for now. Just rather cunningly or stupidly trying to draw in those discord. There's the Predator from Manchester doing battle with Razor Blade. And he comes in the disc and something's been ripped right out of the Predator there. The front buckles lifted torn. And the very innards, the machinery now beginning to fly from the Predator, Barry. And his nephews Christopher and Stephen from St Mary's School. It doesn't look as if there's much life in Razor Blade either, which means the hit notice can now find that the batteries come out of Predator there. On the arena floor, the batteries out of Predator. I think that uh, Razor Blade's in all sorts of problems as well. The battery has smashed the smithereens. Smoking and in smithereens. Who goes out of those two? Hypnotisk batters everything. The only saving grace for Razor Blade is that it sustained less damage. So, Hypnotisk and Razor Blade go through. Christopher and Stephen, it was your job to kick the shins of the Hypnotisk team. What happened? They weren't in our booth. Oh, <laughs> you were going to, weren't you? Yeah. Nah, they're good sportsmen. But just check out the damage done by the disc. How do you feel about that? So much work's gone into it. I know, well, it's quite disappointing, but I mean, it's a really good robot, there. It was a lot of damage. What are you feeling right now? We went out in a bit of style anyway against him because he's so good anyway, but still a bit upset. I have to say, I saw that fire guard coming. When I saw you with the roundup, I thought, oh no, I've seen what that robot can do. But you put up a good show for us, and we love you for that. Come back next wars. <laughs> Well, Razor Blade will also be coming back in a wheelbarrow, I think. The Predator's gone. Hypnodisc go through. Next to Onslaught, Terrible and Cerberus. Terrible in the pits right now with Jules. New to the wars and therefore the pits, we have the Terrible team from West Yorkshire. Terrible. We hope not. They're pad they've got a tons worth of power here in their flipping head, which uh, could be pretty effective. And apparently you go at 30 miles an hour, which is almost unheard of. Why? Why? Because we have no uh, gears, no reduction gears. It's just direct drive onto the wheels. Ah, but probably not a lot of control there for all manoeuvrability. We shall see. They're planning on ganging up with the Onslaught team for the melee, I hear. Hello. They were very proudly told me earlier that they've got the biggest physical size motor here, which I thought was great, bigger than the house robots even. And then they told me that was because it was from 1967. Here we have the Cerberus team from London. They uh, are coated fully in titanium, which is rare, and it means they should fare incredibly well against the house robots in opposition. We hope. Side problem earlier, they came in overweight. This thing, which actually I can't even lift, was the head, which was meant to act as a, a clumping jaw thing. Now we've got a, a single pokey tooth, which we hope will do some damage, but one of these robots will go to hell and back. Breaking news from the pit, Onslaught are out. They will not make it into the arena, but we have our standby robotiers, Mick and Rich, with VMAX. Tell us how it works. 
basically we have a CO2 powered flipper, we can turn our uh, other robots over. Um, if we get tipped over ourselves, we can use that flipper to get upright again. Excellent. Now this is just a bonus for you, really, isn't it? You oh, didn't yeah, think you'd be it. here. Yes, brilliant. Well, I'll do some damage. Thank you very much. What's the story, team? I'm afraid it's ceased to function. Reasons totally unknown, I'm afraid, at the moment. Not enough time to fix it, even after a whole year's worth of work. Again, it's packed up. It's getting on a bit, really, dying. isn't it? It is, yes. Yeah, a bit like, a bit like me. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> well, we would have liked to see you fight. You've been a great team. Come yeah. back for the next wars. I hope so. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, what a shame after so much work, but Onslaught confirmed they're out of the competition. In come VMAX to face Terrible and Cerberus. From Ilkley in West Yorkshire, Terrible. Very quick at 30 miles an hour. Two spikes in the pneumatic head and tongue make this a terrible sight. The shell's three millimetre thick aluminium. The wheels come from the farmyard. Two delegates or a bull in a china shop. Hi, my name's John, this is Ben, and this is our robot, Terrible. Its main weapon is a lifting head which incorporates a tongue and two spiked horns, which lifts up that high and we can lift 100 kilos, and we're hoping to do a lot of damage. From London, seed number 18, Service. Named after the dog from hell, it has steel claws, no longer that ferocious set of jaws. Took 350 pounds to build over eight weeks, the titanium's from a scrapyard, updated from the last series. They had some luck in the third wars, I can tell you. Have a look at this, Kilohertz whoops into the pit. So Cerberus went beyond that stage, and the next again because of their opponents. Haphazard driving sent the Kakufa family through. Cerberus on the right, not to do a lot, let's be honest. But finally, the thing took the doggy for a walk and Cerberus were beaten. Are they stronger this time around? Don't let them off the leash, House Lomas. Hello, this is Cerberus, I'm Theo, this is Alex, and this is Vasso. This is our beautiful robot, Cerberus. As you can see, he's got a crushing jaw, he's got claws that slash and round the back. We've got more slashing claws and a nice big ram to rip somewhere. And also, he's made of titanium. From Romsey in Hampshire, VMAX. Our late substitutes with a pneumatic flipper. It's powered by two industrial motors. Bodywork is aluminium. The frame is tubeless steel. They begged and borrowed for some of the parts. Hello, I'm Nick Pearce. I'm from Team Hampshire Hog. This is Richard Tracing, co-pilot, and this is our robot, VMAX. Um, we like to think it's the most powerful robot that we've seen so far, with the fattest tyres that we can never get, and the biggest motors with the biggest power. Also, this robot features a very powerful pneumatic ram. Uh, it can flip up the opponent and do the real serious damage. Also, if we get turned upside down, we can self-ride and carry on the battle. Robotians, stand by. There's Terrible with farmer John Fernley and his nephew Ben from Woodhouse Grove School. That's Cerberus, without the head now, Theo at the controls, cousin Vassos on the left, and finally VMAX with big Mick Pierce there on the left-hand side of the controls. Interesting to see how the substitutes go here. They say they're bigger, better than the other robots. We shall see. There's Cerberus, of course, without those gnashing jaws. They say they cut a slash and a dash across the arena floor. Again, we'll wait to see Matilda in the action. That's terrible. New competitors to Robot Wars. Trying to use the uh, two spikes there in the head to lift and throw. VMAX backing away now to have a run against Cerberus and toppling Cerberus the number 18 seed. Now, can they right themselves, Cerberus? They talk a good battle. Can they get back into this one? Toppled by VMAX and the pneumatic flipper. And they are in major trouble here, Cerberus. They came in too heavy. They had to have the jaws taken away. And I wonder if that threw their game plan completely out of sync. A little nudge from Terrible. Terrible again, a cursory push and a shove. In comes Sergeant Bash with the great jaws. There's Death Metal with the claws. Meanwhile, Killalot has a little bit of a tickle onto VMAX, but our attention is drawn to the plight of Cerberus being dragged across the arena floor. 
And about to be bent and buckled by the jaws of Sergeant Bash. Matilda watches on. Kill is there as well. Well, that is a major disappointment for Theo de Cooper. Cousin Bassos, who's starting to be a computer programmer. And team member Alex Wink. And they've got in a blink. Cerberus, I'm afraid. The sparks fly. The house robots nearly toy. They have their sport. And it's the end of the competition from Cerberus. In the last series, they got beyond two battles. Were knocked out by the Thing. But at the moment, they are the plaything of House Robot Sergeant Bash and Dead Metal Pit, Pit, Pit is the cry. The other machines, VMAX down there, just staying out of trouble, are they? Get off that plane, Pit, what are you doing? VMAX taking on terrible for the seeded robot in this heat, in this battle, out of Cerberus and about to go down from whence it came, the very pit of hell. beast that guards the gates of hell rolls over and gets its tummy tickled. Cerberus is eliminated. Hey, old team, <laughs> where are you going? Don't leave without saying goodbye. Oh, I, I need sleep. I'm really tired. <laughs> I want to know what happened. Yeah. How did the titanium hold up? Because I was very impressed with that. Oh, well, it got dented, but it, you know, protected the components inside, so we should be, you know, all right. And what, what about the fact that you didn't have your head? Was that a key thing? Yes, I, I think the head's a talisman. It must have a head. He, he just doesn't like it. You know, mm. it's just like, you know... Special. And you flipped yourself up. You did a bit of a James Bond. We did. Unfortunately, we did a James Bond, and we flipped up, but we couldn't keep it and flip back down again. Obviously, the head must have been, you know, angry. Well, you've been very good sports. Oh, that's... We what said one for? of you was going to hell and back, yeah. and uh, we are. Right, you're going back. We're going back to hell. We're going back home, by the looks of it. Off you go. Cheers. <laughs> Well, hardly back to hell, back to London. Anyway, Cerberus, hearts, rules, heads. VMAX and Terrible go through. VMAX will meet Hypnodisc. Oh, and Terrible against Razorblade. One of the unsung heroes will go through. Time for another time out. Because down in the arcades, there's a fight going on. Yes. Can our last pinball wizard fly up the leaderboard? Or will the house bullies bring them down to earth with a bang? Hey. Let the trials begin! The last competitor has 255 points to beat. Gemini, top of the leaderboard. Can Kilohertz topple them from the Pinball Warrior Tournament title? We've seen Kilohertz before. John Reed at the controls and his very adept team. But how quickly can they topple the barrels, put the silver sphere into the pit, drive up and over the bridge, knock open the multi-ball option, knock open the car doors, hit the specific targets around the arena floor. A test of driving skill and pace, 255 points to beat for the entire inhabitants of Oxford. Veering straight towards the targets. Looking for quick, cheap points, back to the barrels. 15, 20 knocks over. Speedy around the arena floor, up to 16 miles an hour, kilos. A very quick run. Attempting to pick up 50 points there from the side target. Guarded by Matilda and Killerlock. They're going to into trouble with Killerlock. 255 points to beat to knock Gemma off the top of the leaderboard. Will they go up over the bridge? Now they're attacking down to that 75 point target. Guarded there by Dead Metal in the pincers. Just throwing the weight for the multi ball. They get the multi ball release option. Can please them again.
attacking the side. Target. There's a little touch. Confirmed. 50 points. Down towards the multi ball via the 75 point target. There was the multi ball. Picking up another 10 points there. Releasing the balls. Very strong run. Courageous. Great fun as well. I think they're going to go close. Very close. Close, not close enough, 20 points off the leaders. Gemini confirmed as the Pinball Warrior Tournament champions. Congratulations to our Pinball champion. Right now, though, the big fight draws ever nearer. Craig, let's remind everyone that these robots are battling for the last remaining place in our series semi-finals. Terrible and Razor Blade. Hypnotist, the number two seeds, absolutely formidable for our late substitutes, VMAX. Jules. Just quickly tell us the story again about why you're here. Uh, a bit of a sort of uh, fluke, really. We were on standby. Um, and what did Hypnotist do to the other two opponents in the melee? Trashed them. Trashed them. <laughs> I just had to ha hear you say that. It's trash, bash, mash in this game, isn't it? <laughs> so, we're going for it anyway. Yeah? Yeah. When you're a braver team than I am, Quite I tell you, confident. you didn't think you'd be here, now you're up against the number two seed. It's okay. <laughs> Even though he's sweating just a little bit. <laughs> it's, it's literally beating at the gate, isn't it? All ready to go. <laughs> I've got to ask you, do you ever feel guilty? There's so much goodwill at yes, Robot Wars. And you don't come in and just hack everyone to pieces. Um, yeah, but that's the name of the game, isn't it? I think uh, all the other competitors would be just doing the same to us, so... If they could. Yeah. What a daunting task for VMAX with Mick Pierce and Richard Drayson, both engineers, as are the entire Hypnodisc family of roses. Dave on the right, Derek on the left, Ken in the middle. The retired engineer now, he's the dad. And together they put together a frightening machine, Hypnodisc, for dancing away. VMAX has done well so far, coming into the event very late on. Oh, goodness me! The first attack leaves a shard of metal on the arena floor. Look at this. The side panel flies off. And I think they've done more important damage as well. I think something has broken this. Gas being vented from VMAX. They must have severed some pipe. You can see another jet of gas there of some sort flying out of VMAX. Don't forget the flipper is pneumatically powered. That's the end of the flipper, in other words. And Hypnotist comes in for the kill. Poor old VMAX came in late, leaving early. Isn't that always the way at the best parties? And here, Hypnotist is enjoying the clearing the floor. It only takes two and a half seconds to three and a half seconds max. That spinning disc to get up to power. Frightening, isn't it? And poor old Mick Pierce and Richard Drayson just want VMAX to come home in one piece. You've got no chance, boys! Because if Hypnotist doesn't get to, the house robots will, and Hypnotist surely will. Out comes the battery again. They've done it again. they totally destroyed and mashed, buckled, bent, and beaten opponents into smithereens. In comes Shunt. In comes Killer with the blinking deadly eyes and dead metal. There is no life left in V minimum. V Max, to give it its real name. But it was minimum problem for Hypnotist to dispose of the late substitutes, game substitutes. Well done off the substitutes bench in the game. But Hypnotist, all conquering, all powerful. And I wonder if later on in the series you'll see Hypnotist battling against the likes of Chaos too. What a formidable fight that would be. Seeded, of course, top two for Robot Wars in these championships. VMAX have played a minimal role in the Robot Wars history, but a game and sporting one as the roses again bloom in Robot Wars with Hypnodisc. Total destruction. Who's going to stop this Hypnodisc? They go through to the next round. Well, oh dear. <laughs> you knew from the melee that it wasn't going to be easy, but...
I wish we'd never had that really confident speech earlier. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you couldn't have surely been confident. I mean, it's oh, yeah, just so yeah, yeah. We knew, we knew that if we could flip him, we were laughing. We knew we had a good flipper, so. We, we nearly got him over at one stage, didn't we? We got in there first, but if you notice the first impact, it was the CO2 went. And the flipper didn't work after that. As much as I tried, I couldn't. That was it. So all I could do was try and battle up against him. And I wasn't very good at that, was I? <laughs> oh. He is, <laughs> he is an awesome robot, though, isn't he? It's very good. Very it's good, isn't it? Well, number two seeded, so yeah. what can we say? It's a drawing board for you, then, isn't it? Mm, yeah. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Have you had a good time? Absolutely. Yeah. Brilliant. Brilliant. Going Brilliant. up against Hitler, this must be worse than cutting yourself shaving, though, must it? <laughs> wow, what an experience, though. Oh, what an experience. <laughs> I wouldn't know. I should have spotted that, yeah. shouldn't I? <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, let's hear it for VMAX! Cheers, guys. Well. I, I think you get a bit too nice, though. As soon as you sort of, like, wreck a robot, you don't go far enough, I think. You just kind of pull back once you've sort of, like, you know, bashed it in and that's that's not far enough <laughs> what do you want to say well it's like i was trying to, i was i thought you were going to get inside it and start making everything fly out you know i saw, I saw the battery go yeah we've seen the battery go and uh, so we've seen the co2 go as well so once we've seen that we knew that we were on a on a good uh, good side of it so i've got my money on you ladies and gentlemen let's hear it for hypno disc <laughs> so what are you going to use that for now uh, an interesting garden, garden ornament, perhaps. <laughs> I, I can't think of a better uh, thing to do with it. Oh, we might be able to sandwich some parts, but um, we'll have to take the rest of the bits off and see what we can uh, get out of it that still works. You know, There's not an awful lot left, to be honest with you. Are you going to start again for the next wars? Oh, definitely, yeah. We've, uh, we've learned a lot, so we know what not to do next time. And I think you have had the, top, the toughest opposition. We know what not to do next time, and that's uh, build a robot, really. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I think anybody that follows Robot Wars would be very, very proud to have gone out to hit the disc. And uh, we'll see you in the next wars, we hope. Yeah, 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 yeah. definitely. But what sort of robot can withstand Hypnodisc? VMAX, not enough. The disc will now meet the winners of Terrible and Razorblade. Now, they already have come up against Hypnodisc in this heat and felt the pain. Well, it's been touch and go getting here, hasn't it? Because we took a lot of damage in the melee from Hypnodisc. What's the situation now? How strong are you? Uh, well, well, we'll try to repair as much of the damage as we can. We hope we're, we're good enough to get through this next round and then fight them again. Hopefully you win. want to fight them again? Yeah, we'd like to fight them again, yeah. And win. OK, it can yeah. be done. It can, it can be, be done. done. We got a flipper. We had them nearly over last time, so... Uh, Out of the arena. We hope. But you've got to face these guys next. Yeah. No problem. <laughs> <laughs> flipper against flipper. Let's see what happens. Terrible are in the pit. The arena doors have opened. Do you actually want to get through this? Because if you do, you'll have to face him with this. No, we don't want to get through to fight him with this, really. No, not really. He's joking. Of course he does. Every robot will yeah. want to do that. Still, you've got to get through this round now with razor blades. I can see him. He's looking ferocious. He is. Yes. It's going to be carnage. <laughs> Terrible isn't built to win this. What is it built for? Strange weekends at home for the Terrible team? Up against Razorblade. And there, Paul Hart, Steve Scotcher, and Howard Andrews. Three, two, one. Down the Fernleys and Terrible. Up to 30 miles an hour top speed. Defeat Razorblade. We didn't actually see those top speeds from the ball in the first battle. Up goes the head. Up went the tail briefly as well. Lovely looking robots. A lot of tender loving care has gone into the look of terrible over the arena flame pit. How do you like your ball? Red. <laughs> Pop sale soon. Terrible spinning around. Well, they lingered too long on the flame pit. I'm not too sure what John Fernley was doing there. He's built a horse box back at home. I think old Terrible will be going back though. In the boot of his car, crumpled in the ashes. The great moo went up as the horns were lifted. But Razorblade with a, a broadside can perhaps topple Terrible coming in again. No Terrible turns, tries to get the hydraulic lifting head. The whole entire head is pneumatic, by the way. In the flip up, Razorblade, knock it over. At the moment, they're, they're wary of each other, perhaps, using similar weaponry. It's become a feature of Robot Wars, the pneumatic flipper at the front, and I wonder if Terrible 
has been immobilized. Whether or not the effect of the flame has flickered too long. There is smoke from the rear end of the ball. I'm not too sure if that is from the tail only or whether Terrible is not so full of terror anymore and is terrified out there. They've certainly been immobilized, haven't they? Dead metal senses that. They're out of the CPZ. So too, Kilal, it's all over for Terrible. They're off to the, the old cattle market to fetch what sort of a price, I wonder. Not a lot for Terrible. But it's going to be Razor Blade going through to meet Hypnodisc. Up comes the head of Terrible. A little defiant flick towards Dead Metal, nothing more than that. And they've hardly struck a bullseye here. Against Razor Blade, shaving its way. Out of the grip, first of all, of Shunt and then Dead Metal there. Poor old Terrible. Against the arena sidewalk, Killalock comes in to cut off a joint or two. And really, it was a bull barbecue that caused all the problems early on. Onto the arena floor flipper. So we're going to see Bully flipped up and over any moment now. Get out of the way, Killalock. He's spoiling the fans. What? What are you doing? You want to see the ball flipped up and over? Retreating away, kill up. One, uh, two, uh, three. Come on, Flipper. Yes. Oh, there he goes. Well, old John and Ben in that control part, looking down on their creation. Terrible. Sliced. And at the end, it's Razorblade going through. Well, terrible turned into mincemeat. Razorblade through by the skin of their teeth. Yeah, yeah, it's got, yeah, caught fire. Yeah, he caught fire. Yeah, caught fire. Must have burnt the wires out. We got. We, I wanted him on the flames enough to cook his tail, yeah. and then get off. But he got stuck. You were fairly lucky though, because razor blade was um, was all burnt out down one side. Yes. Yeah. You know, yeah. they could only go around in circles, but you were just totally no, dead. Was, so yeah. we lifted dead metal though. We got dead metal up on the off of one wheel. Yeah, it's a small, well, con that's small that's consolation. It. It um, what are your plans now? Are you going to build a bigger robot, a better bigger, robot? Bigger, powerful, yeah. yeah. More power. We'll be back next year. Well, we'll see you next year. Ladies and gentlemen, let's hear it for Terrible. <laughs> Cheers, guys. Raise a plate. We were lucky. You we were, were very lucky, lucky. really. We were really lucky. Yeah. We received a lot of damage in the last round, and uh, we we're actually using dead metal speed controllers, so um, yeah. we've got a problem there somewhere. Do you think you can repair it in time? Hopefully. I no. think it's going to get fairly well bad next round anyway. Because <laughs> I was going to say, you feel as though you're lucky, but um, you're not so lucky really. Because, uh, you know, you're up against Hypnodisc in the yeah. next round. We're actually wondering if we should lose all that. <laughs> Fingers crossed, lads. Good luck. Ladies and gentlemen, let's hear it for Razor Blade. Well done, lads. Did you throw that pipe? No, no. Are you sure? No, I'm sure. We just did exactly what the name says. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. We got cooked. You did? Yeah. But you put up a good fight. Oh, we did. Certainly did, but out they go. Terrible, which leaves the heat final. Razor Blade up against the Red Hot favourites, the number two seeds. Can they beat the unbeatable? Hypnogist. They've already met, of course, on their way to this heat final. In the first battle, they made mincemeat together of the Predator. And Razor Blade also had a couple of very good attacks on Hypnodisc. A little bit unfortunate. It didn't sustain too much damage. The Predator did. They were in pieces by the end. So were VMAX. As Hypnodisc smashed its way through. Creating mayhem to the heat final. Meanwhile, the razor blade, having survived against Predator, then saw Terrible linger too long on the flames, became immobilized and roasted. Razor blade grew, but at what cost, Jules? We're in the test pit for the first time. Razor blade, what's going on? A lot of problems with speed controllers, uh, basically a speed controller on each wheel, uh, and we keep losing one side for some reason. We've changed the speed controllers twice now, and we're actually using, as I said before, dead metal speed controllers. Yeah. Um, but we just cut, it worked for a while, and then all of a sudden one side just cuts out. Is that damage you suffered from Hypnodisc originally? You not, pulled it not totally terrible. sure. Yeah, not totally sure. 
to know you're back um, against the Mr. Dan. I know. Well, hopefully we can get it running for that, but at the moment uh, it'll only go round and round the circle, which isn't much of a battle. That's all hypnotist does, though, isn't it? Oh. Yes. <laughs> anyway, I'll leave you to it. Time is of the essence. It is. I haven't seen the inside of hypnotist before. It's not too special. It's batteries and motors, really. It's not really, is it? <laughs> but we know that it does some serious damage. And you've got your opponents absolutely terrified. They just put on a very brave face with the camera, but I know. But they're pooing their pants. <laughs> that's what we like to hear. A bit of fear. A bit of fear. Yeah. We did yeah. only get half the job for earlier on, so uh, we're on finish them off. Yeah. Just promise me, don't go easy on them. Well, the full Monty this time, though. Yes. Come on, that's no, what we like to hear. No holding back. That's it. So how is she looking? Uh, basically, she's bleeding to death. Uh, the hydraulic system is leaking like a sieve. We haven't got a pump because the uh, gaskets have all gone on that. Uh, we've got half a speed controller, so we're hoping to keep it running just long enough to run away. But I'll be very lucky if we survive this intact. Or so even what? get onto the arena yeah. floor. Absolutely, yeah. But the audience are cheering for you and well, they want to We're hoping to give them a good show. We want to give them a good show, so we're here. If we, if we get smashed to pieces, that's fine, but you know, we'll give them a good show. And so we're left with two robotic heavyweights. But only one robot can go through to the series semi-finals. It's seconds out. It's gloves off. It's the third and final round. From Hanbury and seated number two, Hypnodisc. It's David against Goliath. It's the Hypnodisc Rose Boys, the favourites. From Cambridge, Razor Blade. The poor old Blade team, Paul Stephen, <laughs> getting booed. The audience don't know what we know. Is bleeding to five. death. Three, two, one. Activist. This is a little bit like putting the heavyweight boxing champion of the world in against my gran. It's Hypnodisc against Razor Blade. Oh, the awful truth there. Just, just pulling back to come forward. A nudge has already caused problems to the side panels of Razor Blade. Aluminium and steel but buckled already. Now a spinning Razor Blade though, causing problems of its own with that spike at the back. It has a little hydraulic lift at the front. That's it from us. It's almost the message. Well, we've, we've done all we can. Now let's just retreat onto the arena flames. Razor Blade has the steering problems, the pneumatic problems. It's now a question of how much damage Hypnotist wants to cause because you can see quite clearly it's all over for Razor Blade. They know it. They're the Cambridge boys in the Razor Blade team. HQ, look at this. The panel, the side panel completely ripped off. A clever attack by Dave Rose, the driver of the Hypnotist team because the innards are now exposed and they can go in and just really create as much metallic mayhem as they want to. The house robots can come out because Razor Blade is immobilized. They are the rules. Kill a lot. You know this, just uh, playing with the shard, the remnants. A little relic of war, a trophy perhaps, leaving poor old Razor Blade to the house robots like Kill a lot. The most awesome robot in the war, surely, with the huge jaws, the large the heart of evil, drawing razor blade across the arena floor with a gruesome inevitability. There's Sergeant Bash waiting to see if they can also join in the rest of the house robots. A shame, really, that the heat final petered out so early because of the problems of razor blade. But you can't take it away from Hypnodisc. It has caused so many problems caused problems for Razor Blade in the very, very first battle in this heat. And Hypnodisc looks on and conserves energy, and why not? Because Hypnodisc will be going through to the series semi-finals. And they're awaiting trembling robots. Hypnodisc is to be feared. It is destructive. It is demonic. Out go the brave Razor Blade boys. A last tumble, perhaps, for them. A last bit of rumble from Hypnodisc, perhaps setting them up for one last arena heave-ho! For the Razor Blade, blunted by Hypnodisc and the House Robots. A 
and crumbled to dastardly defeat in this heat final. Little is left at the end. Much is left to talk about Hypnodisc and the Rose Team. Sheer destructive power and metal mayhem. Hypnodisc are through to the Serie semi-finals. What a shame, guys. You kind of, um, you lost your drive, you lost your power, didn't you? Yes. That's what happened, didn't it? Uh, and, and, just couldn't keep going. And, yeah. and then, you're losing your power and being up against Hypnodisc. The like gods we, were not smiling on you. No. They were gentle with us. They, well, they, they did sort of like back up because, I mean, you know, you've got some ex expensive equipment in there and it wasn't worth wrecking it because you weren't going anywhere really, were you? Uh, we wanted to make a show of it. We didn't want to just drop out, so, uh, you know, make a bit of a show. But we didn't get through. Good luck to the lads. Yeah. And uh, have they gone away. Go away. It's very gallantly, the lads, and you've done very, very well to get this far anyway, so we'll have you back, won't we? Maybe. Let's hear it for the Razor Blade Posse! <laughs> We'll be doing this tonight. <laughs> it's your new, sig your new kind of signal. It's brilliant. Spin to win. Spin to win. Yeah. Well, they didn't have a drive. It was quite easy oh, for you, really. Well, it was, yeah. Um, they, were, they were good sportsmen actually going in there when they knew they were um, low on power and control. So, yeah, all credit to those. And you were very generous. You still haven't got that killer instinct. Uh, oh, no, well, we could have totally trashed them, but uh, they got some expensive gear in there and uh, it wouldn't have been fair. So. You're saving it all up for the series semi-finals, aren't you? Well, we're going to get a disc spin in and uh, we'll see what we can do. Yeah, but please, promise me this, you won't pull any punches in the series semi-finals. No, we're going to go full 110%. Ladies and gentlemen, let's hear it for Hypnodisc! <laughs> well, you can hear the French screaming zoot laws. It means they're blooming and scary on Robot Wars. Bye-bye. <laughs> BBC One has Limp Biscuit and U2 on Top of the Pops now. Then Tom Hanks and Kevin Bacon star as Apollo 13 goes for launch at 10 to 8. BBC Two's Earthbound for the next 90 minutes with Outdoors on Friday.